Hey everyone, we're the Master Brothers. And we're going to be driving our Tesla 400 miles to see how well the 2021 Model 3 refresh handles the cold weather. So in this video we're going to be covering trip planning, battery efficiency and charging, the driving experience, whether or not the aero wheel covers actually make a difference, and finally the overall costs and the breakdown of the costs throughout the trip. Now we're going to be doing this same exact road trip in the summer to compare winter and summer driving. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. So the night before the trip, there were a few things we had to do to make sure the car would be ready to go in the morning. So the first thing we did was plug the car in and then change the settings in the Tesla app to make sure the car would charge to 100%. And then we changed the settings in the OMI app to reflect the same thing, so to bring it up to 100% as well. Yeah, you shouldn't really charge your car up to 100% unless you're planning on going to a long trip because if you keep on doing it, it'll degrade the battery so then your maximum range will end up decreasing. Yeah, so Tesla recommends that you keep it kind of below the 85% mark for a daily use and then only put it to the maximum when you really need it. Yeah. So we set the charge to reach 100% by 8am in the OMI app because OMI is what's controlling the time at which energy is being delivered to the car. And then in the morning at 8.15, so about 45 minutes before we're leaving, we turned on the climate in the car to precondition the cabin and precondition the battery to make sure it was nice and warm for when we set off. Yeah, and while the car was preconditioning, we left it plugged in, so it was charging during that time. So we ended up heading out with about 99% battery, and the charge overnight when we left cost about £4.24. So in the morning before leaving, it was minus four degrees Celsius, which is about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty chilly. And it ended up staying around that temperature the whole day. It only really went up to around three, four degrees Celsius, which is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And mostly just stayed around the freezing level. So zero or 32 degrees. When the car was ready to go, it was predicting we'd get about 328 miles of range which isn't bad, but it's a bit lower than the 360 miles which Tesla says you'll get. Yeah, however, we put in our final destination of the Chorley Supercharger, and when we put that in, it said we'd arrive with just 5% remaining, and that was 200 miles away, so there was still a difference of about, what, 128 miles that the battery was saying we should get, but the navigation was saying you weren't gonna get out of the car. Yeah, it's, it's tough to know which, which number to trust. Yeah, so I mean, I think, I think the navigation definitely compensates for the colder weather. It mm. knew that it was gonna take more energy, and especially because it was basically all just motorway driving at 70 miles an hour, so. Yeah, either way, that 5% did have me really worried about making it back without the aero wheel covers on. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens though. We'll find out pretty soon. And also just a quick tip, if you are planning to stop at a supercharger, I definitely recommend inputting it into the navigation because then the car knows and it'll start preconditioning the battery for fast charging when you're about half an hour away from the supercharger destination. So definitely put it in the navigation. So while we were driving, we were using autopilot most of the time for efficiency and consistency when Sean and I switched over. And I found it pretty cool in the beginning, but then after about 20 minutes, I got really bored of it because once you engage it, there's nothing really you can do. <laughs> I only thought it was cool when I started thinking about the technology behind it, but to be honest, in my opinion, it kind of sucked the joy out of driving because you just stick it in there. It's great because you have nothing to worry about, but then it gets boring because you don't really need to do anything. Well, almost nothing to worry about. We did have a couple of issues, but we're gonna go into those a bit later. We also kept the air temperature at 20.5 degrees C, and we used the heated seats for each of our seats that we were sat in on the low setting. And just as a quick tip as well, in winter driving, the most efficient way to kind of keep yourself warm is to keep the air temperature kind of low, but use the heated seats to keep yourself warm. So after half an hour of driving, we checked the energy consumption uh, trip projection and it turned out to be a lot better than we were expecting. Yeah, so as you remember, when we first headed off, it said we'd arrive with 5%, but now it's saying 17%, which is quite good. I think what they do is they give you a very conservative end battery, mm -hmm. so then when it improves, it makes you feel a lot better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it gives you like a worst case scenario sort of guess. Yeah, it definitely reduces that range anxiety a little bit. 
Yeah, so it was predicting 17%, so we were feeling pretty happy, pretty comfortable that we would make it. Yeah. So our average energy consumption over the last 30 miles of motorway driving was at 290 watt hours per mile. And that was driving at 70 miles an hour on autopilot, auto steer, the works. And only overtaking people if they were slowing us down below 70 miles an hour. Yeah, we ended up hitting a construction zone, which meant we had to drop down to 60 miles per hour. And then our watt hours per mile actually went down to 250 and then averaged out to about 240 watt hours per mile. Yeah, and with the watt hours per mile, the lower the number is, the better, because you're using fewer watt hours, which is a form of energy per mile. So less energy per mile, more efficient. So our projected energy that we'd arrive at the destination with has now also gone up from 17% to 19%. So clearly 60 miles an hour has had a big impact in improving the uh, sort of energy that we would arrive with. In terms of comfort, I was feeling completely fine. I didn't really think about it really, felt no need to adjust myself, so I was sitting pretty well. I was sat in the middle in the back seats to kind of get the shots from the back, and that wasn't too bad. It was a little bit uncomfortable on my lower back, but I think it was only okay because I could spread my legs out in the back. Um, there was no one next to me. So if there were more people in the car and I had to sit in the middle and I had to like kind of keep my legs together, that would definitely be more uncomfortable. Yeah. There was a good amount of road noise. We did a sound test and it was about 80 decibels. It was also quite nice to see some of the UK's renewable energy production and being in, elect in an electric car and thinking that maybe actually our car is running off of some of the energy that those windmills produced. Who knows? Who knows? Now, your Tesla isn't entirely green if you're using a tariff that runs on fossil fuels, so we definitely recommend switching to a green tariff that uses renewable energy. And Octopus Energy provides just that. So they have 100% renewable energy tariffs that are also variable so that it can be cheaper to charge your car at night. And sometimes the prices even go negative, so you'll get paid to charge your car. Mm -hmm. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in switching and you'll get 50 pounds off your bill. So after about an hour and a half of driving at 70 miles per hour, our watt hours per mile went down from 290 down to 260. And that's mostly because there weren't as many people on the road. So there weren't any slower drivers uh, that we had to overtake. So we weren't slowing down and accelerating as much. Yeah, just being more consistent. So I guess the average for 70 miles an hour would be about 260, 270, maybe even 275. The destination energy projection has also gone up even further now from 19% before, it's gone up now to 22%. So no more worries at all about making it to the supercharger, we're going to be just fine. But then again, we shouldn't really have had any worries in the first place because we should have had an extra 100 miles of range. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's just what happens in the cold, so got to get used to it. I suppose, yeah. With Sean in the middle seat, it was tough to see anything out the back, so the rear mirror was pretty much useless. Yeah, so I ended up moving into the left seat by the window because that was more comfortable for me anyways and just gave me a bit more visibility. Yeah. In terms of comfort, as Sean said, left seat was more comfortable. And for me, I was doing all right. There was a little bit of lower back pain and a bit of neck pain, but I think that's because my posture is just really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm, sit up straight. Yeah. So about an hour before arriving at the supercharger, the trip energy projection showed quite a steep decrease about 30 miles before arriving at the supercharger. And that's because it was compensating for when it would start preconditioning the car for the faster charging. And so that took the sort of projected energy we'd arrive with down from 22% to 18%. Yeah, about half an hour before arriving at the supercharger, the watt hours per mile increased from about 250 to about 300 watt hours per mile, which shows that preconditioning does take up quite a bit of energy. So we arrived at the supercharger, plugged the car in, and then started taking off the wheel caps for part two of the experiment. Yeah, they were actually pretty tough to take off, weren't they? Yeah, it was tough, and it was really, really cold and windy, <laughs> so it made it really, really tricky. Yeah, it was pretty horrible. <laughs> But luckily, we could just chill out in the car, watch some Netflix, and the climate was on. So it was just a really nice Tesla perk in there. So when you're charging, you're never really bored. Yeah, and it was about time that we needed a break too. So it was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. 
and we brought our own food and everything just for, for obvious reasons to kind of reduce any social interaction. So when we arrived at the supercharger, half of the bays were occupied, so we had to pull in and share with someone else, which slowed us down a little bit. Yeah, because the way superchargers work is, say for example, you have four superchargers, 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B. If somebody's at 1A and you plug into 1B, you're going to be sharing the energy. But if you plug into 2A and nobody's at 2B, then you'll have all of the energy to yourself. Yeah, so you share it based on the number, not the letter. So when we were sharing our charger, we were getting about 60 kilowatts, but then someone else left and that left a number free. So we moved our car there and we ended up getting 100 kilowatts, which was much more like supercharging rates. After charging, we headed off with about 98% battery. And the best thing was, was that the charge was completely free, thanks to you guys. One of you guys used our referral link, so thank you very much. And if you're looking to get a Tesla, be sure to use that link and we'll both get a thousand free supercharger miles. Yeah, and that's a really great benefit for you as well because then you can charge your car for free at the superchargers. Now, if we didn't have the referral, this supercharge would have cost £14.75 for 202 miles that we drove, which is about 7p per mile. Now that's a little bit more expensive than petrol for our Hyundai i20, but the i20 is a relatively cheap car to run. So yeah. for an actual competitor like a BMW 3 Series, that petrol cost is about 12p per mile. So it's still cheaper than the fuel for its competitors. Yeah, nearly half the price, which is great. Yeah. When we navigated home, it did suggest that we stop part way through to top up at a supercharger. But since we made it there with 15% extra battery, we were pretty sure it was just an overestimate. So we took out that supercharging stop and then it said we'd arrive home with about 5% battery remaining. But we didn't really think that taking off the aero wheel covers would have that big of an effect. So let's see how we got on. About half an hour after leaving the supercharger, things weren't looking too great. The car kept on telling us to stay below 65 miles per hour to even be able to make it home and the predicted battery was still at 5%. Yeah, so the watt hours per mile has now gone up to 330 watt hours per mile, which is even more energy than it took when it was preconditioning the battery for supercharging. Yeah, so it's so, getting a little bit worried. Oh yeah, we were, we were a little bit worried at this point. It was a lot less efficient and it was a bit windier, but I think the main effect was really just removing those aero wheel covers. In terms of comfort, I had enough of the middle seat, so I moved to the left seat and it was so much more comfortable. The floor height is a little bit high, even if you're as small like I am, but I found it alright if I just cross my legs. Yeah, and for me, I was sitting in the front obviously because I was driving and my back was in a bit of pain, but I adjusted the lumbar support and that made it a lot more comfortable actually. My, my lower back felt fine, so I never really used a lumbar support because I, I didn't like it, but yeah. it actually did help quite a bit. I probably shouldn't try that. <laughs> so in terms of autopilot at this stage, uh, there was an incident where someone was drifting into our lane and we were just, we were driving and kind of overtaking and coming up to him. And the car didn't slow down to kind of compensate for that. It just waited until we were really close and then it hit the brakes pretty hard, which was kind of terrifying. And I guess that's why they say with autopilot, you do need to stay paying attention and take over. But I just wanted to see how the car reacted. So I, th I think autopilot is just a good substitute for an idiotic driver. I don't think it's, it's quite there yet, but then again, I probably should have taken over at that stage, so. Yeah, it was a good kind of test to see, but I think what it did was pretty dangerous. Like mm -hmm. if somebody was somewhat close behind Sean, mm -hmm. with the way that it braked, it, it could have been very bad. Yeah, So it was, it was kind of terrifying as well, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So fast forward a bit again, and we've been driving at 70 miles an hour for 30 miles now, and the watt hours per mile, so the efficiency of the car, is at 300. Which before, with the aero wheel caps on, it was at 260, and now it's at 300, so... I mean, it's more than a 10% difference in the winter with the wheel, with the aero wheels on. Yeah, it's a pretty big difference, we definitely did not expect to see that. Later on, we ended up hitting another construction zone, so we had to go back down to 60 miles per hour. And after about 30 miles of that, our watt hours per mile was about 286, and then it dropped down to about 266, which makes a bit more sense compared to the 250 240 we were getting with the aero wheel covers on. But that's still like a 5 to 10% difference, which 
it's still quite a bit when you think about it. Yeah, it does, over a long distance, that makes a really big difference for the range. If you're doing a long journey, you could take them off and then put them on uh, if you're going for long drives, I guess. That would kind of make sense. Yeah, I suppose. They are pretty easy to put back on, but taking them off is a pain. <laughs> taking them off is a pain. We didn't mention that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it was now looking like we'd get back with just 4%, which was pretty worrying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was it was scary at this point. There was definitely a bit of panic there. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, in the end, we actually made it back home. We had 10 miles of range remaining, or about 3%, so we were cutting it super close. And that really showed us that the aero wheel covers actually have a pretty big impact on efficiency because our efficiency probably decreased by about 10%, yeah. which is pretty big, especially if you're doing a long trip like we did. So in terms of costs, at the supercharger in Chorley, it would have cost £14.75 to charge from 18% to 98%. And then when we got home, we charged the car up a little bit for 60 pence, and then we went to a supercharger and charged from 5% to 81% for £15. So in total, the cost was 30 pounds and 35 pence for the full 410 miles that we drove. So yeah, when you're driving the, the Tesla Model 3 in winter, the, the fuel costs do go up because it's not being as efficient. And if you're doing these long journeys, supercharging is definitely a bit more expensive than your normal at-home charger, but the rates do vary. So it's it does make sense to have a look around and see if you can plan for when it might be a bit cheaper to charge. So on this road trip, I'd say that we've learned quite a few things. Yeah, autopilot can be pretty dangerous. You just gotta make sure that you're paying attention whenever you're using it. Mm -hmm. The second thing that we learned is that the front seats can actually be really comfortable if you get that lumbar support right. And the back seats are pretty good, but I would definitely not recommend sitting in the middle seat. Yeah, not on a long journey at least anyways. And then very crucially is that the aero wheels have a massive impact on the efficiency of the car. 10% over a long journey can be the difference between you making it and not making it to your final destination. And finally, I think having Tesla's supercharger network just really makes having an electric car worth it. And I mean, if you're going on a long journey, I wouldn't want to go without having the accessibility of that network. So anyways, if you want to see more about our Tesla Model 3, check out our full review. I'll leave a picture right here that you can click on and go straight to that video. From the Master Brothers, We'll catch you on the flippity flip.